Welcome to another episode of the podcast. And uh, today, over time, you always need kind of special guests in order to, uh, you know, give the channel or the uh, podcast a boost. And emergency measures, I had to get the doctor in. So without further ado, the yeah. UK and world Bangla legend, Punjabi music legend, Dr. Zeus. Welcome to the Bandwagon podcast. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me, man. You're doing a great job so far. Thanks, man. Oh, it's been a long time in the works, this one. I've been, uh, we, I've been working on you in loads of different angles. And Simon Tolly Simon says he managed to kind of hook it up for me. Yeah, I had yeah, E three guys in in a, in a, in a Canada trying to sort it out as well. So yeah. trying to trying to get you pinned down is very very hard, man. Yeah, I'm just look. I'm still in the studio now, man. Like I'm working. You know, what I'm saying I'm just working away. You know what I mean? Um, I just want to keep working. To be totally honest with you, and I'm on my own. I'm my jacks, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and... I was looking at some of your old, um, like, interviews and stuff, and I can't find a real, uh, a recent in-depth one. Is it, do you do that consciously where, like, you want to split yourself away or not give your interviews or just, just no, the way I'm it not, is? To be honest with you, I don't really, I'm not very much of a talker, to be honest with you, you know? Like, I mean, when I say I'm not much of a talker, I'm a talker, you know? Like, if I was chilling with you Odan, we was having, you know, a social or whatever, you know. Um I, I'm I'm great like that, but like when it comes to interviews and stuff like that, I kind of find myself being very reserved and 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 when I'm not reserved, I kinda of say the wrong things and I don't hold back. You get what I'm saying? And so I tend not to do very many interviews to be totally <laughs> Just, honest with you. That that foot in mouth disease is really uh really common in Punjab before. Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather just be, you know, I mean, I do believe I've been in the in, like industry for a while, like, you know, and I, I think for me, it's just about doing more work, uh, giving more as much as I can and what I feel, you know, you know what I mean, musically. Um, and then with, with back in the day, like 20 years ago, I probably would have wanted to like, I probably I probably would have been chasing you to do this interview. You get what I mean? Yeah, I, I so, had I've had a, I've had a couple of meetings with you uh, back in the day. A couple of ones I actually want to like thank you for. To be honest with you, one yeah. of them was um, met you when you used to do daytime gigs at Millennium near Merry Hill back in the day. Oh and man, this, I remember them. <laughs> so I met I met you there. Exactly. That was, those are the grafting days. You get what I'm saying? Doing daytimers, you know. When I first come on the scene, I can't believe you mentioned that, bro. Uh, is, is that uh, yeah, I got to big up Bobby for that, man. Bobby, you used to do the shows in them days in in Wolverhampton and yeah. around Mary Hill and stuff. Yeah, I remember though because you have to get sneak snuck out. And then the other time, I was with the uh, Polly Tank, and we're doing Mega Mella and. Uh, Holly saw Anil Kapoor in it and he ran off there to go and do the interview. And I was just left there and I and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So I looked to the side and, it, and you're standing there and you're like, don't worry, I got you, bro. And you just had one of your one of your albums and we just listened to it from start to finish. We did not, they didn't know what I was playing, what was being like. <laughs> All your songs came <laughs> one after one after one. It was and, I, and then you were like, yeah. he's like free PR in it. I said, carry on, bro, put it on again, let's put it on again. But uh yeah. Yeah, man, I just saw, yeah. when I saw you there, I thought fair play. Like you, you, we see quite a lot of people coming in and out of the studio, and they had one face where they're in front of the mic, and then off the mic they're completely different. Like mm. never meet your heroes, but you, you, you were very consistent. You were always exactly the same. There was no bullshit about it. Yeah, now like, to be honest with you, like I mean, I don't really take much shit off people. You get what I'm saying, and. I don't really give anybody no shit either. You get what I'm saying? So therefore, I don't believe anyone should give me any either. And um, and for that reason, I know with people, the way people have treated me, you know, because I've always been like that, you know, and people have looked at me and thinking, okay, you haven't really changed much, you know what I mean? Despite what you got or if I've got a name or if I'm, if I'm doing tours or if I'm doing songs for big artists or whatever, I haven't really changed. I'm still the same person in that sense. And I think that's kind of very important to be kind of humble and be that way, um, especially in this line of work, because it's very easy for, for shit to get to your fucking head. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it could kind of like, uh, you see a lot of 
artists, great artists downfall because shit has got to their fucking head and they can't control their fucking ego. Now, I'm not saying ego, you shouldn't have an ego. Everybody should have an ego of some kind, but they got to have some kind of control. Like, for example, if like if I have an ego, my, my ego is just with myself. And when I look in the mirror and what I tell myself, you know, every morning when I get up, and, and I think it should be like that for everybody else. And I think that's a very controlled manner, a controlled way of moving forward, you know. Um, and back to the question, yeah, you know, um, <laughs> like I said, I don't, like, you know, like back to the, the, the first thing I was saying, I, I either do interviews or I just rub it on or and stuff, or I don't bother doing them, you know what I mean? I stay away from them. So back to the question you was asking, which was, uh, you know, I've still been the same and whatever. And I think, yeah, it's very important to stay humble and, and stay the same and, 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 and take people's love and, and not let it get to your head. Your career, when you as when you we call it the grafting days, like yeah, you got um, introduced into um, I think it was for your family to kind of like uh, in um, into Pradesi, and it was somebody from in the Pradesi. Yeah, no, nah, when I first started, it was like um, there was there was obviously there's the band Pradesi, um, you know, that did pump up the Bangla, shake your pants, those mad albums that kind of paved the way for Punjabi yeah. music back in the day. In the UK, um, so my my uncle was best mates with Surinder, the Tolki player, and then Cam obviously frantic. Cam used to play guitar, and then there's there was the other brother Rag used to play keyboard. So that band was very much kind of around those three brothers um, that you know control the backbone of that band, you know, and very much on the production side as well. So I I was very close with like you know like Surinder used to pick us up from nursery, you know, and school and stuff. With my uncle, um, so we got. I, I've known Surinder all my life, and then obviously with you. When I know the one brother, I'm gonna know the other brother as well. And I got really tight with Cam. And then this was in my school days, you know, when I was like uh, at secondary school, um, and uh, I used to kind well, of sky we'll get it. off. We'll get, I knew you yeah. were gonna say that. <laughs> well, I, I chill with Cam in the studio, you know, and I was picking up a lot of stuff, you know, and at that time. They had given a room to partners in Rhyme, you know. There was Prem and Juggy. You get what I'm saying, Juggy, the DCS drummer, um, and uh, they were doing great music at that time. So I was learning off, like, you know, I was rubbing shoulders against some of the best kind of people in the game. Um, so for me, it was very natural to be picking up stuff, and if anything sounded odd, it was very natural. It came across, or you know, it sounded like that to my ears, and and that's how I started, really. You know, under them lots influence. You know what I'm saying? But you like your brothers didn't go into that into that line of work into music. Were you the no. only one which was against the grain in that way? Where you? Well, to be honest with you, my brothers are all right. They're kind of like they're educated, you know. Um, and I kind of like didn't make it that you know that far. <laughs> that far. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Options, didn't it? You got the options so, and that was it. So, I mean, look, look, mate, I was working three, I had three, I had two jobs when I bought my my uh, first computer and started learning music. So I was learning music and doing two jobs. NIA? Yeah, and, and National Car Park. You get me? I was doing a night shift at the National Car Park and then doing NIA shifts as well, man. And then and I was signing on as well, and I got caught for it. It was a mad one, that one was, but still, we don't all go there. You know what I mean? But those are my mad stories when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so where I were did you mad ones. At that time? Where was your, what was your ends then in terms I was, of like... I was living in, I was living in Spark Hill, in Birmingham, Spark Hill, man, big up B11. You know what I'm saying? Oh one two one. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm B I'm B twenty one original Hansworth. So I, I yeah, got, yeah, like, you're from the other side of town. Yeah, we were on the dark I'm side. Saying, so. <laughs> yeah, you're from the other side of town. Which B twenty one, big up B twenty one as well, bro. You get what I mean? The north. So, um, yeah. so it, so y there was a couple of things when I was uh, when you were talking about, especially your influences, and when you got. When you uh, you started uh, learning with Cam Frantic pretty early on, yeah. and he was kind enough to give you kind of a space for like pre production and where you started yeah, learning. Yeah, yeah. Like there's two bits, and I'm gonna come on to it later because your career is that like, you've got an ear for that unique sound, but then you got another ear in terms of like for when you started experimenting with like the more desi traditional desi music in about 2005 onwards. So you yeah. got these two kind of genres of where you do it. How did you find it? 
you got all these influences, right? You got Cam. He's he's making everything for anyone commercial. Yeah. He's smashing. Yeah. It. How did you know what your sound was at that time? Um, I don't know, man. I was I was like at that time I was listening to people like I, I was heavy Tupac fan. You know get what I'm saying? I, I was listening to Tupac hardcore. Um, I was listening to Biggie even. You know what I mean? Uh, I wasn't a big Biggie fan, but I liked a couple of the beats because I was, uh, you know, if I liked anything of Biggie's, it was because of the beats and stuff, you know what I mean? Um, to the point where, you know, maybe I secretly did like Biggie's songs. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But I, was a I think it's safe to say fan. now. If, I think everyone's coming you know out with Tupac was, was secret. A, yeah, I was a hard, when I mean I was a hardcore Tupac fan, you know, like I even got my nose pierced and stuff, you know. Um, but my sound, like, I was listening to all sorts, man. You know, I was listening to Tupac. I was listening to A.R. Rahman. I was listening to um, R.D. Berman. You know, music. You know, when I used to listen, work in the car parks, I used to be listening to old Ruffy songs and Kishore Kumar songs um, just to get the night by, you know what I'm saying? Um, okay. And it was like, it's like you're doing a night shift for like, say, 12 hours or 10 hours shift. How many how many times can you listen to hip hop or how many times can you listen to that one genre, you know, without going crazy? It's the dopey without songs. Falling out, without falling out of love with that song, you know, or that genre. So I had to mix things up. So I was listening to crazy amounts of music, like from Arabic and everything, you know. And I was listening to sounds, and then obviously I had a sound module, and I was learning how to program and stuff. And then when you you're experimenting and looking for sounds and couple of so sounds blow you away and stuff. You kind of start to play with them and kind of start to figure out your little signatures and stuff like that, you know, what you really like and 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 what you what you subconsciously don't even know that you're doing but you actually end up doing and you may think you've done something different but people can still hear that's Zeus's production or whatever. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Or even go as far as saying, "Well, mate, that sounds like the last song." Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, no, I get it because it was like I always thought about how because you had a very close, like you've had relationships with some of the greatest UK producers of all time, where you've had you've learnt from from like Cam or have had a close relationship with Cam, and then you yeah. had Buta as well at the same time from B21. yeah, Buta, Buta. Listen, I forgot to even mention Buta. There's like Buta. There's a guy called Angus Campbell. Um, so Buta Jagpal, Angus Campbell, as well as Frantic Cam. These are like more or less like my teachers. Obviously, Cam would be at the top of the pyramid, right? But these are like my 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 mentors, you know, when it comes to production and stuff. And um, also, I, there was a lot to learn from people like Simon and Diamond. You know, people are forgetting about the, those guys. Those guys were like, those guys like were my idols, you know, um, in the sense like, remember, I was at school when I was buying their music. Like, oh, you know, movie, <laughs> yeah, movie over India and stuff like that. And that was the coolest, coolest stuff. Mm. Uh, um, you know, in my school times, you get what I'm saying? It was like, so I looked up to them, uh, both brothers, Simon and Diamond, and they showed me a lot of love back. And they still do. And, and you know, and I think they're amazing, amazing producers. You know, they've worked with people like Shania Twain and and big, big artists. You know what I'm saying? Um, so hats off to them guys, but they were they were like my they were like my idols, and then those three guys, Cam Frantic, Buta Jagpal, Angus Campbell, they were like my mentors. You know what I mean? And and with Cam being right at the top of it, you ain't gonna get better than that. That's like a, yeah, no. The, so the, I mean, the trio. I mean, if, if 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 I'm not gonna learn anything and be in the position that I am today, hanging around with them guys, then like. It would have been a big waste of time, wouldn't it? So how did you, know? you then the, the story then from like obviously going on to the production to to sign to signing up with uh Envy was your was Envy look look Envy used to do like Envy before Envy there was Roma Music Bank and Roma Music Bank they they were like uh uh Prit Pal who the 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 founder of the company uh, a great guy you know and he he used to do he used to have bands like Suffri, um, all other loads of bands and stuff. And they used to they used to do a lot of business at Cam Studio, like Bookie Studio to record and get Cam to engineer and stuff. Um uh, and, and even some of the production, you know what I mean? Um and so they they kind of 
split from Roma and and became a company called Envy. And and they were looking for artists. Uh, and when Cam told them, look, uh, there's a producer upstairs, you know, he's kind of, kind of, you know, he's uh, under my wing. You get what I'm saying? And uh, so they wanted to, they wanted to sign me up, you know, and, and I was kind of like, I don't, I was like, mate, I earn like 1500 pound a month, man. You know, unless you're going to make me earn that kind of money. I ain't signing nothing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't signing shit. But nobody, yo, fifteen hundred pound a month dead is big, man. I was like, oh, yeah, because, thinking... mate, remember, I had, I, I had good job, like, I, I was working hard, man. You know what I mean? Because remember, I, there was nothing else for me, man. There was no further education. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Because I'd kind of flopped in school. You know what I mean? And uh, so there was no further education. But I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to do music anyway. You know what I'm saying? And and then Envy came along and they wanted to sign me and to sign me up on some real, like, um, Indian type of deal. So what does that look... Thing. Okay, so I've had... Um, I've had Boot... I had a rare interview with with Boot. I've done a podcast with him. And uh, we kind of offline, he was talking about a little bit about the contracts where it gets into kind of like muddy waters. What did a contract look like then? Was it like a free album deal? Was it a five album deal? Or how, how did it work? Or was it just kind of... Yeah, it was like a five album deal. Didn't that intimidate you in that way? Because it was like, you know, that's a long relationship. Nah, it didn't intimidate me because I know I was going to put, this is what I wanted to do. I was going to do five albums. I meant to do 20 albums, bro. You get what I'm saying? It made no difference to me, right? But what it was, it was like, because I was starting off um, even like a hundred pound a song was big money for me. Like someone putting a hundred pound <clears throat> in my pocket um, for like say 800 pounds for eight songs or something or a thousand pounds for like you know 10 songs or whatever you know was big money for me you know what i mean and it was like they were taking care of the studio time as well for me to mix and get my song sounding complete you get what i'm saying so it was good like that in that sense and then every album it was a deal like you move up if uh, on the next album be 200 pound a song Third album, three hundred pound a song. Fourth album, four hundred pound a song. Fifth album, five hundred pound a song. Right, um, but obviously, you know, things kind of worked out a little bit different because, you know, your bro kind of jumped the queue, like jumped the stairs, kind of like the steps quite quickly. You know what I mean? So, so from who first... was there at that time when you were signing up? Like, because I, 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 I know, I knew Envy, I knew because um, obviously I'm hands with. So I was like, yeah, there, was like Raj, there was like Raj and Raj is the one who wanted to sign me. And then there was Viv um, who was kind of controlling the whole, the whole structure of that company Envy, you know. And was Sanj there or coming? Did he, how far after was it? Was he then? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe they were in the equation. I'm not sure. But I know Sanj came in a little bit after me, possibly. DIP and everyone was. DIP was there. DIP yeah. was there. Yeah. DIP was there. God bless them boys. And and DJ Stin was there. DJ Stin yeah. was there. And the DJ Case was there. I used to go but, for there, there was a few people. There was a few people there. But I never and and to be fair, everybody was really nice. You know, I mean everybody from DIP to Viv to Raj, everybody was great. You get what I'm saying? Um, from me starting off and and supportive and and everything in that sense, you know what I mean? Um, but like uh, it was one of them ones where like um, my first album was didn't do too great. The second one was a garage one, which really kind of got my name popping. Right. So you, had, you had Def Jam 4.5. Yeah. So it's not. The yeah, same. that was that was just like, I don't know why I didn't. Even, I don't know even why I put that out. That was more like, you know, when you get signed by a company and, say, and they give you a bunch of songs and you got to put them together. Yeah, that was that. That wasn't that was more of checking my production skills and see if it works or whatever. You know we what I mean? You were looking at 200 pound a song then, didn't you? <laughs> the second one. No, but it was 100 pound a song then. And even on my second one, it was 100 pound a song because the first one didn't do too great. Okay. And then the second, the second one, um, when I did High Life album, um, the best that's, ever. When, that's when my money went up a little bit. And, and, you know, I think, you know, everybody was kind of cool with it and everything. But then when we did the the Kangana album, 
that's when my money shot up to like five hundred pound a song, you know, and uh, for me it was like, yeah, it's it's cool. But I was kind of more, I was more, I was more at that time. I was more kind of um, happy that people are actually listening to my music and people are even fucking recognizing me, man. What the fuck, you know? What I, mean? was, I, I I just I, I don't know if you caught it, but. You had like Suma Ass as one, one of your titles. Yeah, that was the Garage one, innit? The Garage. The and then one. High Life had the probably the most controversial cover. In the... Yeah, 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 yeah. That was all real, that was. That wasn't no like made up cover. That was real, like someone was actually standing in front of me like that. So it was, so you just, yeah. was it, was that, a, was that a photo shoot or was it just? The photo shoot, it was a photo okay. shoot for the Fair album enough. cover. And it was supposed to be like, I don't know, supposed to make me look kind of super cool, man. I was super intimidated, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, was a little, I was young, man. I was young, you know what I'm saying? But it's but cool. But is that, that, wasn't that the persona that you, like, obviously to come up with names like Suma Art and, and then you've got... Hi, look, up, I mean, to you be fair, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I know I'm trying to like act all, for, like, all kind of grown up and everything. You know, but I mean, you could picture what like a 20 year old was like, you know, I was very feisty, man. Like if I had them titles, it's because I was a cheeky so and so. And people really didn't say much to me or I didn't really say much to people in that sense. But it was like one of them ones, like even people wouldn't wouldn't really say much to me just the way I looked. And I couldn't get I couldn't get around that. I couldn't get my head around that. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't get my head around that, you know. So my brother's just popping through. No, that's safe, man. You can jump on if you want. Um, you know, with um, so you, what would you? Uh, uh, you started going to do kind of like more DJ and you help it. It was DIP was yeah. kind of the first ones were giving you a break on stage. Uh, was yeah. that right? Where you were trying to get that experience on it? Yeah, they just called me on stage and and I was all right. I was told not to swear in and I started swearing. I don't know why. I was young in it. Uh, you know, first thing you could do. I was, you know, you can imagine. I, you know. You're young and you're cocky, and everybody knows that you're a cocky so and so. And then you can't, you, you can't just like go on stage and not be super cool. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was like, yo, everybody make some fucking noise. You know what I mean? And, and uh, I had the promoters trying to tell me off afterwards, like I'm some kind of school kid. And then was he in terms of some of the songs? What if you go back? What was your first point? Which you, you this was a song that kind of blew me up. Cause didn't they give didn't DIP give I, you I a think, song? I think Gandhi and the Doll put me on the map in the, in the sense that I started getting shows, like in UK I started getting shows. People started booking me and stuff. Before that, no one was really booking me for club shows. I was just like going with my mate Juggy, you know, from DCS, and just going with them to their shows with them. You know what I mean? And my mate Sonny, um, and Mickey and everybody, you know. So, um, and Simon and Simon was it? That's how long I know Simon. So. Um, you know, um, before that, that that's all it was, man. I mean, did, I forgot the question. Huh? No, did did the uh, Gandhi on that all was that DIP song, and then it was actually I made it for their album because they were doing an album called DIP Plus Guests or something like that, <laughs> and and uh, um, I'd done it for them, but then. I took it back in it and I put it as a title track on my album. <laughs> I'm having that. I'm having this yeah. <laughs> and, and and it worked for me and it was all right though. It still what, was good. What was the like obviously we get we get an idea in terms of the I would say the um the confidence that you had and the the strength in your own ability in terms of what was what was happening from there. Who was your when you looked around it, did you class yourself as having any peers or your competition? And if you did, how um did you use it as motivation or did you definitely say, right, nah. I'm going to love on out, I'm going nah, nah, to be No, 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 nah, man, because I was rolling with the best, man. I was rolling around with B21. You get what I'm saying? And no one, I mean, if you know that time of music, no one, no one could tell me anybody was bigger than B21 at that time. You get what I'm saying? So I was, I was rolling with B21. It was like, it was doing, we were doing Dr. Zeus B21 shows and stuff. They were, they were big. You get what I'm saying? I was flying out. I was flying out the country with them and stuff like that. I didn't see anybody as my competition because everybody was nice to me and everybody was cool. Anybody in the music game, like, for example, uh, anybody I respected, 
I respected a few producers at that time that like there was Kuli from RDB. Um, you know, may may so rest in peace, you know what I mean? He was like, he was like my brother, you know, we used to always be meet up in clubs. And I used to drop a new tune, he used to be like, no way. And I, he used to drop a new tune. I was, we used to be like vibing off each other, like, mm. no way, you've done, a, you've done a next remix or whatever. We used to do them things. And then there was Rishi. And, and Rishi was like the most nicest guy to me. You get what I'm saying? Anyone I respected musically, they were, they were like super, super nice human beings. You know what I'm saying? Um, even I'm in here. Everybody was, everybody was super sweet with me. You get what I mean? So I didn't really see anybody as competition. It felt like we was all working together. And it was such a vibe in them days because um, you'd have shows like that would range from Jay Sean to Juggy D to Jazzy B, um, uh, Suffrey Boys, Malkit Singh, you know, Dr. Zeus, B21 on one night. You get what I'm saying? Those were the good days, man. I, oh, I lived it. I love it. Yes, so so I mean, it's like uh, I don't know, man. We was it was like I'll be honest with you, that 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 era of artists, we're all being like, it's all been like respectful and and always encouraging to each other. You know what I mean? Whether it was me coming new on the scene or anybody else coming from under like after me on the scene. It was always words of encouragement, you know what I mean? And saying, yeah, you're cool, man. Keep doing what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? And and um, one thing that I always kind of asked any of the producers that were that uh, that I do do get on here, fortunately, is about how people kind of strive to get use certain studios or um different techniques or, or different people around you to always have that same sound or try and find your sound. Was that something that you were looking at building your own thing, or would you go to a dedicated space? Because now, like I had Jazzy on, yeah, uh, a couple of episodes back, and he was talking about how he missed as a singer uh, doing the big studio sessions of you know in the morning. And nowadays, it's he understands of you know you've got a mix master guy over here, you've got the lyrics, yeah, yeah, there, yeah, and blah blah yeah, blah. So yeah. how, how did, when did you start noticing the change in your techniques or? Did you just now nah, my techniques have been the same, bro? Like, you know, it's like um you either come and sing, record the song with me, uh, that you're gonna do, or you will send me your vocal and I'll I'll do my bit and send it back to you. It's always been that way for me, bro. You <laughs> get what I'm saying? I, I I'm not one of them kind of guys who likes to have singers in the studio and like kill off two, three hours of my time and be brain dead by the time it comes to me doing production. You get it? So if someone records a vocal and sends it to me. I've saved an hour, half an hour, whatever long it's going to take the singer to sing the song. I can get on with my music straight away and start building a vibe. Isn't that isn't that much better? Yeah, I mean, because like one of the things that uh, was to, why why I kind of asked that question was the speed and the amount in such a small amount of time. You release something like three albums within six to nine. Well, within about twelve months or something. Was it? I mean, the yeah. Gills. Um, yeah, that, bro, that was like, mate, that was like me. That's like me doing a good year's work, right? And and not releasing anything. Um, and it was just, it was just unfortunate because you know, like, it was a mad transition between digital and and physical at that time, and no company was willing to spend money on videos and shit like that. That's where kind of like where I kind of pulled where my last straws were with envy. It's like I thought you could take me. This is the furthest you could take me. I don't think you could take me any further. Because what I want to, where I want to reach, you guys don't want to spend money. You just want to like pocket money. That's it. Make money. You get what I mean? And not so was it, your su- was it your success then that started to show the cracks in that relationship? Because you guys were, if that it movement was, no, was one me, of the... Listen, for me, it was like, listen, I've got sheer volume of work. If I've gotten, if I've got a Nasrud Fateh Ali Khan album ready, if I've got a Mrinda Gill album ready, I had a Sharmila album ready. I had Jugni G ready. You get what I'm saying? Those things were ready now. Those things could have come out separately had there been budgets or had there been some planning. It was like neglection on, on, on certain points of releasing. You know, whether it's whether you could blame it the transition of digital to uh, physical to digital or you're not understanding it or whether it'd be a simple fact of that you guys are you guys are made your money, man, and you guys don't care if I make any. 
right or whatever you get what i'm saying it came down to a point like that for me and how, how did you i don't i don't i'm not really it's, it's ironic that i'm actually asking a gossipy question but i'm not asking it from a gossipy question but a point of view but well, look, I don't, I'm not gossiping. I won't gossip. I'm just going to state facts, bro. Yeah. That's how I talk, bro. And it's not like I'm back chatting or anybody or anything. I'm over stuff, man. I moved on. Yeah. Um, I'm just talking about, if you're asking me about my past experience about certain things, I feel as though I owe you to tell the truth because one day if mm. I flip and I want to tell the truth and you and someone refers me back to this interview and whatever, I don't want to look like a, a person who's kind of like just faking shit. You get what mm. I'm saying? Mm. And and that's what I was trying to get to in terms of like, did you did you feel disrespected in that way where the, the value like as an artist more than anything yeah. disappointed more than anything, um the fact that like, like you know everybody knows how big of an album Gangan album was everybody knows that you get what I'm saying, and if I was to go into detail in what money I would have earned off that, I could hand on heart I could I could say it was mainly off my shows you understand me there was no like oh we've made 500 grand or 600 grand or 300 grand here you go Zeus here's a little fucking bonus or whatever in fact I was bought I was given a bonus I was bought a car an Audi when I didn't have a license right and it was bought on my mate's name Right. And all, all that was put down was like the initial payment. And were, I was expected to pay the rest of the payments. And I was like. And I did it as well, like an idiot for like about two, three years. And, and then I just jacked it in, to be honest with you, bro. Wow. So for me, it was like a, for me stepping. Remember, I, I started with Envy. It's very much like it was like family for me. You get what I'm saying? Because I was young and, and I was with them guys for a very long time. I got on with all the artists. And everybody, most of the artists, right? Um, and uh, it was like, uh, I really felt as though I was doing the most work in that company as well when it came down to production and when it came down to um, originality of work and what works, what work worked, I would hand on heart. I could say it was my projects that was doing the damage, even though DJ Sand was there, but... You know, half that music was like Dr. Dre or whatever that was sampled in them days. You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because I, 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 <clears throat> at that time, obviously, it was very hip hop kind of sampled, taken yeah. from there, put a yeah, vocal and, on and, it. And, and I'm not, I'm not saying that was a bad thing because I'd done it previously to me starting my original production. I used to do that as well, and I, and I thought I was pretty badass at it, and I still think I am. I think I can manipulate anything. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right, that's my pure skill. That's what I used to do, but I needed to step aside. I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be picking. I wanted to understand what I'm picking up. How do I get that sound design? And I and I've worked. I'm still working till this day to learn how to get a, a perfect sound design on a song. I mean, somebody going through that kind of um, that experience could could make you kind of bitter towards the industry or the or the work that they do. Did you ever get a, to a point where you're thinking I might just sack this off and forget it? Nah, to be honest with you, no. I mean, th there was lows and highs, you know, in the sense where, like, I had a name and I didn't have the money to back it up, mm. you know? I'm not going to lie to you. There was those days, you get what I'm saying? And, I, and my, 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 my daughter had just been born and stuff. And and I would I would question thinking that, shall I go fucking just get a job and, and hope no one sees me at work or whatever and recognizes me, you know, stacking shelves at Tesco, I don't know. You know what I mean? Mm. I did contemplate stuff like that. Um, and then I thought to myself, not really, man. That, I can't do that, man. And I just uh, I just got myself in that mode um, that i got to be able to create quality in quick time. That's going to be my saviour. And, and since those days... And believe it or not, it's those Jada days. That was actually that time period where I was that seeing that time, you know. Um, and after doing all that much work, I was still f like, I didn't have the money to match the the status of name. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And so champagne like, lifestyle, lemonade income. Yeah, like no man, I didn't have none of that, none of that, bro. Like even even after doing all that work. So that's where I thought, no, man, I got to even work even harder. I got to work even harder. 
Um, and I've got to make myself different and I've got to make myself versatile. I've got to open up my, uh, I've got to broaden my horizon, you know, like, and in the way. And I started uh, listening to more uh, types of music again, what I used to do originally when I first got into music. I, I, wanna, I wanna go I wanna um go back to the co- the couple of artists that when I think of you in terms of like the relationship between you and the artist is always kind of, was synonymous in terms of like you introducing them to me when a, as a as a punter. What, one yeah. of them was obviously with a with was with Master Rakesh and and, yeah. and the song Kangara, which absolutely blew the world up. In terms of, yeah. in ter- you know, when you were coming with that production and when you were, when you were making it, I know you got to a point where you were even sick and tired of hearing it and that you you did you didn't like it. Yeah. Do you, when you think back on it, <laughs> uh, back on it now, do you still have the same feelings for it? No, man. That to be honest with you, you know, like when you're producing a song, um, and you're listening to it and listening to it, you want it to be over so you can put it aside and you don't want to listen to it because you've made it in a certain way, you've already kind of manifested that thought, you know, that uh, this is going to be big. I, I don't want to keep, I don't, I'm not in the, the habit of listening to my music over and over again until it becomes something, until it's published, um, you know, and, and, and until public give me feedback to it, you get what I'm saying? And, and if it's positive feedback, I, I will then listen to it. You get what I'm saying, or play it in my set, or whatever. You know what I mean. Uh, but if it's not, then it's just a song that I've kind of forgotten about. Because I know you did the Rouge remix of it as well. Because out of anger, did you? It's yeah. Like... That, well, the thing was, no, that was that's a different story, bro. That was like I'm doing so many shows. I'm so excited. I'm and I'm on the bill with B21 and like there's Juggy D and there's Jay Sean on the bill and it's like a big. Big gig, man. You can't ramp with that lineup. You get what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, I'm there. Yeah, the DJs are dropping my tune before me. You get what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, where's the respect? You get me? So you know what? I went home that night. Booter dropped me off. Um, I think it must have been about two, three in the morning. Um, and uh, um, I, I just sat in my, my, I used to have my setup in my bedroom, and I just, I had this flute sample and I had a beat. I had I had a I, I made this beat and I put the flute sample on there and then I had the kangana sample I just sampled a little bit because in them days I, I don't know, I can't even turn around the camera and show you but I got the, I still got my little pioneer CDJs yeah yeah, yeah, the, yeah the vinyl scratching on them whatever yeah. and stuff right so I, I was dropping the the kangana vocal just the a cappella on off a CD because in them days you used to get vocals on a CD. Mm. Right, because there were no drives or anything like that. Right, so if you wanted data information, it'd come on a CD. You know what I mean? And if the CD scratched, it's over. <laughs> that seems all over. Right, so it was one of them ones. Um, but I used to back my stuff up anyway. But anyway, back to that song. Um, and then I had I had an acapella of Lauren Hill. You know that um, girl. You know you gotta. Mm. Watch yeah, yeah. So I, I took that singing part out and I just used the rap bit. And uh, and I put the Kangana sample in, and, and I I made the remix for Kangana that way because that song was big at that time as well. Mm. That I think it's called Do Up or something like. Oh, I don't, uh, Lauren Hill. It was um, yeah yeah yeah. I I dig it out actually. Right, mm-hmm. and that song was huge. So I thought, okay, let me see anyone mess with me now in the stu- like you know in, <laughs> don't in, drop in a nightclub. <laughs> right when I drop the refix of Kangana, you get what I'm saying on this sick ass beat, and. Uh, and then next thing you know, like uh, that beat was, I, I'd done it a few times in the club and whatever, and it was cool. And then um, Raj heard the beat. He wanted, oh, this beat's sick. I want to put these girls on there and this, that, the other, blah, 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 and whatever. And and that's how it went. And that's how that Don't Be Shy came. Mm. Always, I've always, because uh, Bali always used to do the, the remixes as well at that time. And it, and it used to be, I oh, just saw now remix that he did, that that they, yeah look they Bali did. Jagpal had, look Bali Jagpal uh, a lot of people don't know man but Bali Jagpal had a had an ear for picking out songs and putting them together like if he had a Punjabi song a fresh Punjabi song he had a knack of hearing something and he used to listen to a lot of R and B trust me I know if mm. anybody and you can ask Simon or anybody else in that car 
he used to drive us crazy by putting songs on repeat. You know what I'm saying? He used to listen to all sorts of stuff. So he had a knack of picking uh, music elements of a, a hip hop song and involve, involving it in his Punjabi song. And, and to be honest with you, man, I think that's how B21 became a big name, you know, um, because Buta would glue the whole thing together and make sense of it, you know what I'm saying? And Bali would be like instigating the idea and then Jussie would sing it. Yeah, yeah. It was Miseducation of Lauren Hill, the album. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Just did that bit. I did. I'm only saying, I feel comfortable now because you're doing a gig in the, in, at the mill and I'm going to see you there with, with yeah, Jazzy yeah. and Frenzy as yeah, well. Man. But like, you and Lembert was like beans on toast for me. You know, like when yeah. he just went together, you kind of showcased his his skills. Like yeah. he was obviously doing tracks with loads of people. He had loads of songs out everywhere. But like the way that you demonstrated it on the album, yeah. I just don't think I don't think he ever got to those heights again for me personally. And that's that's just yeah. my, that's just my conversation. I mean, it's a shame. It's a shame because he's a really talented singer, man. Like he was then as well, man. Um, I mean that at that time I don't know what it was, man. It was just a element of luck, so to speak, or whatever, man. Anything like we did together, it kind of worked, like in a big, big way. But I mean, he he kind of like he was. I mean, when we did his album, it was like I gave him a copy of his album. He maybe he misunderstood. He thought it was the final version. He gave it to the company to release without notifying us that the album's going to be released in India with the India company. And it was just madness because it wasn't the final edit. You get what I'm saying? And I was annoyed with him because of that. And I think so was Envy. And then Envy went as far as bloody even writing Lamberger and chopping half of his face off and just leaving his bug there and whatever, which... Which was, I mean, at that time, you know, it was like, I probably was thinking, you know, I was young. I'm probably thinking, yeah, serves you right, you know, you're so-and-so, right, for, you know, releasing my f unfinished work, you know. Um, and I was doing the album for you, bro. Like, why would you do that? You get what I'm saying? It was those kind of feelings I was getting. Um, but I think eventually, uh, at the end of it, I think he blamed me for it, you know, that, oh, they did this, he did that. And he went as far as saying some wrong talk on certain shows and saying that they made me sign something and it was in English and they said it's just formality and they made me sign it and this, that, the other, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I did an interview and I took his contract in with the written in Punjabi. <laughs> yeah, right? say, that was a British. His, his, his cousin brother Amrit Saab wrote the contract. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can bring him here to prove the point. You get what I'm saying? Um, and it was just madness and I think it was you know like I was saying it's what I was talking to you in the beginning about egos yeah it's like I I also had a heavy heavy ego then as well but I weren't going to go out of my way to kind of um, get him cancelled if you know what I mean yeah and, but he was kind of giving that talk like he, I mean the, I, I'm sure you've seen that meme you know that's going around like you know, you get what I'm saying, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I can laugh about it now, to be honest with you. I can laugh, laugh about it now. But I, I mean, I've never to in my life to a point or will ever say that I made Lembu Hussein Puri because like I th I've always affirmed I'm a spiritual person, man. I believe that God puts heads together. He makes the Rashiya. You get what I'm saying? He puts people together and those things make an explosion. Right. And then without those two elements, it's never going to be that explosion kind of thing. You get what I'm saying? Mm. You know, the what timing, I mean, I, everything at that time, the timing came together. Yeah. It, was, it was perfect there. Because I remember, right. I remember, so I, I, bought I, would, two I, would never, I would never ever say that, you know, I made that guy or anything like that. Mm. I would say that, you know what, God has put us together. If something happens, it's going it's to be in God's grace. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, because I bought that. I was in India at the time, and I had I bought his that version, and then when when I heard Bali and Satyasanaya at the beginning of it, I thought that's yeah. the that's the version. 
That's the yeah, 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 that was, well. You see, there was a there's a polished out there's a proper version that was mastered properly and mixed up properly. He had an unmixed album which went out to so many people in India and Punjab physically yeah. on CDs and stuff. I mean, like, and plus, I mean, all it all it is is a phone call. Like, I gave I personally flew out to India to give him the album on CD. So have a listen to the album so you know that I got a home album tyar ho rahi hai you get what i'm saying as nadio company nu onu keh diyo thande baitho album on wali hai you know what i mean so you cool now though really hey are you are you cool now i may i'm absolutely cool Look, i've gone like i says bro like we're all growing up man you know um whatever galla sigiya wo do time diye sigiya bro which I, i think is i never spoke to him but he's always over whenever he's met my dad he's always been respectful with my dad and my dad's always sat down and had a drink with him or whatever so they've always had that relationship so mm-hmm. it isn't nothing like it wasn't anything how the whole media was kind of uh making it out to be yeah. in that sense you know like it wasn't a ruckus in that sense i remember doing the song satsriya kal i just did the song because i liked it <laughs> yeah, yeah. and people actually thought that i did that for him you know what i mean it wasn't actually nothing to do with him that song i had like maybe at the time when 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 you know we was doing stuff with lembert at that time you get me should have been lucky on on that man that was a sick track you yeah, know like, when you i mean like your range of artists who you worked with uh, like we ain't even touched on bollywood you know what what you yeah. what you doing there but like you know your your sound flipped again when you were working with uh, uh, arminder gill and that, how did that relationship happen as well because like you t- again you took there's no disrespect to those those artists but you you took them in another direction to another platform and you've got this consistent formula of where you've been doing this mm. and i think you get disrespected for it to be honest with you i don't think you get the right credit that you should be getting in terms of what what if you put your if you put your catalog against anyone i don't I think, think anybody could test it really to be honest with yeah, you the I songs are got i think the struggle the amount of songs I've got, but I mean, look, a lot of the stuff is credited due to some of the artists as well. Like I'm in the Gill is like a, he's like an amazing artist, you know. Um, uh, and when I met him, he was going into movies and stuff, and we did Judar and stuff, you know. So he he had signed up his first few movies and stuff. Um, so Judar was like, it was it did it did great for me. Like I I, I don't always look at it like. I've never looked at it like you know when I'm doing a project with some singer or if I like a singer's voice or or it's even if it's an unknown unknown singer or a known singer if I like the voice man you know like I want to put my uh, my whole soul behind it you get what I'm saying and then whatever happens after that happens you get what I'm saying if I get appreciated for it then great if I don't then that's also great you get what I'm saying but people like Amrinder um I'm in the Gill Jazzy B they all show me a lot of love man and they're top 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 like human beings you get what I'm saying like you know the artists I want to even use the word artist man because they the way past artist kind of thing I'm talking about on a human level they everybody knows what they like as artists you get what I'm saying but on a human level these they 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 fabulous people man like you know so down to earth would you and uh, would this I, I, would I don't mean this to be kind of controversial in in that way but I I would say it was about that that those bits where you kind of moved away from the sound that you kind of when you were working with like Cam or, or Cam Frantic at that time. Yeah. Was that fair to no, say that with, you with changed Cam, it? Was, look 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 with Cam it was a case of what look when I first when I first started doing music Cam used to help me quite a bit you know he used to play the guitars and to the point where even till this day if I need a man if i need a certain piece played if i need harmonium played if i need anything played i i and all i got to do is just call cam and i can go to his studio and i he'll record it for me there and then you get what i'm saying not only that he'll also teach me new tricks you know on 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 the program that we use to make music he'll teach me more tricks you get what i'm saying so it wasn't nothing what well, i at that time why it was being totally honest with you it was a case where cam was doing music he's writing there were certain songs where i wouldn't even hum out a piece and cam would play just or then it'd be a fab bad boy piece or something and i would keep it 
but then it's not my writing. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So therefore, he deserves a share on my song when it comes yeah. to writing. You get what I'm saying when it comes to yeah. royalties. And then you had on the other side, I had my company Envy saying that Cam's saying that he does all your work, he wants all the thingy. And Cam was saying, I ain't said any of that. What I did, I just took a back step from both. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. And and there was this big thing about, you know, and it was industry people as well. It weren't even fans. It was industry people just saying, oh, Cam does all his music. Oh, Cam does all his music. You know, and I just wanted to get away from that whole thing, you know? And it I wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't ever for one second on bad terms. I'll make that clear. You get what I'm saying? And Cam will clarify that as well. Because me and Cam, we're like bros, you know, we still talk till this till this day. Um, even on if you hear my latest songs with Amrat Man, um, even my latest song with Rahat, the mandolin. Who do you think played that mandolin? I can't play mandolin. You yeah. get what I'm saying? But you're producing but, it though, and it, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I know what the piece I want him to play. Yeah. So I'm yeah, 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 yeah. I'm writing what I want him to play. You get me? Whether it's a guide piece I played on my keyboard and say, hey, Cam, I need you to play this in mandolin, or whether it's me humming it to him personally. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it becomes where he becomes doing a session and playing that instrumentation for me. You are already doing what the new gen are doing now, before the new gen. <laughs> Mate, the new gen, I'll tell you what the new gen are doing. The new gen are picking up sample kits, right, and basing their songs around that, you know, which ain't a bad thing. But I, I think I may start that. I think I'll clock about 10 songs a day like that. You get me? Because what they're sampling is what I make. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like the whole ambience of a beat, the kick from the kick to the snare. It's not like I'm taking a beat and then, you know, taking a bass line from there. You know, I'm actually composing and writing my own shit. You know, the, I, I remember when the first time when you dropped uh, Mitra and Dibu, didn't it? Like, I'm, yeah. I am a Jazzy B yeah. big fan, super fan, yeah? And when you dropped that, for me, that was another switch in terms of the music from it. How did you? How did that project come about? Because I couldn't, I couldn't put you two. That together. was mad because you know what? That was mad because that switched the whole thing for me so badly. Because before that, I was doing bare hip hop kind of beats, and no one was really testing me on them. You know, no one was really testing me on them, and and because everyone else was doing hip hop beats, and it was everything was sounding the same. You get what I'm saying? So I wanted to switch things up. So, you know, when I did, when we did the Mitra and the Boot, I wanted to just smack it with just a Tolkien Baja. You get what I'm saying? Because that's, that's what I was trying to say early on in the And interview. that's what we did. Bro. Yeah, but yeah. then after that, hear the play. After that, I want to go back to making hip-hop beats and hip-hop songs. Why? And why? you got man's... Listen, you got man's paying me like... Like 10 Gs plus... And then because when I did Jazzy, soon after Inch followed, didn't it? Zora's song, Inch, yeah. which was also a massive banger, right? And uh, all of a sudden, I became the in Pangra Punjabi producer. And I'm like, hold on a second, bro. I'm more hip hop than any who's out there. How you kind of. And if I was doing a song, for an uh so for say any artist who's paid me money to do a song and I've done it hip hop, right? And I think it's badass what I've done, something brand new. But did you, you know, did you contact Jazzy in that way? How did that relate? How did that initial meeting happen? Not me. Not... I, I, I was doing shows with Jazzy as well, so I got quite close with Jazzy and I'm I'm very close with Jazzy. Uh, there was a, a, a um Jazzy's bass player, Juggers. Yeah. Right. And and Popsy and everybody, I'm kind of close with them as well. You know what I mean? So I got I, I got close with Jazzy. You know, we're doing shows with them in Dubai. We did the Dubai rain dance. We did shows in Canada and America and stuff. And, you know, when Jazzy had released his Romeo album, my Kangana album was out. So we were doing shows together mm. and, and stuff, you know. And so it was at that time we had already spoke about the song. So um, but we didn't get around to doing it till 2014, I think. Yeah, it's 214. You know, like, um, you know, the, the amount of vocals and the artists that you've got, you know, there's always the Wu-Tang Volk um, album, you know, that, that's been hidden away and someone's got it. And uh, yeah. it will never, 
have you got like a bunch of unreleased masterpieces that that may not see the light of day? And do you think that uh, that you would ever work towards of actually releasing them in, in terms of because I, yeah, I have all these may people... I got loads, may I got loads of songs. All I'm doing is polishing them up and just like. If they sound old to me, just revamping them. Not because ja Jazzy said in the in his obviously you've, you've done the latest album with him and um, Born Ready, and he was saying that you guys had like 20, 30 songs within with it that yeah. you worked at and you cut it down. Now to yeah. me, it's like where's those other twenty? I want to hear. Want to... Oh man, I could play them, bro. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Crazy songs, bro. One of I got one song of Jazzy's coming on my album, which in the next month or two. You get what I'm saying? Which is like the single I'm gonna drop. With Jazzy from my album, so you know that's a big song, man. Beat Sings wrote it, man. I think it's gonna be a huge song. And then, like, people forget you've worked with Snoop. You actually, and not just any. Yeah. He's in a video. He's actually. You yeah. know how people have done this stuff where they've like, yeah, and he's never retweeted we're it. Again. Chilling with him hard, bro. Yeah. He's chilling with what Snoop was, hard, no, man. You, very early on, you talked about your relationship with. Uh, with um, in, in influence with Tupac, and then then you're meeting an OG of that crew. How yeah. what was that like then in terms of how do you, Wait, you, you can't, how do you contact Zora? How do you get get to that position? Me, me and Zora, me we were just like asking him about Tupac and stuff. You know what I mean? You know and stories and stuff, man. And uh, it's mad because like uh, and that was Zora's first. Was that his first release? Of it? Um, no, Inch was his first. Inch was the first. Inch was the first. That was like, I don't know, the third or fourth or fifth or whatever. I don't know. One of them. You get me? But yeah, that was a big, that was a big team. It's still going strong, actually. I don't know. It's about probably 100 million plus views or something. I don't know. So like, how does that, how does that, how does that connect go? I'm, I I just want to know a bit that. So how did you make the connect with him to say? Uh, that was through my friend Cheryl. Um, in, in Las Vegas, she works for a company called uh, Spectrum Global Agency. So she deals with people like Megan Fox, Al Pacino, Tom Hardy. She gets some like million pound endorsement deals and all sorts. And Salma yeah, Hayek. She and went all with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyway, Snoop's brother used to stay with her. Snoop's brother used to stay in her house. Like she looked after him from like Snoop's younger brother. Uh, Bing used to stay with her. So um she got me the connect through Bing, and then you know, we sent our money to Snoop. Like, you know, um, we didn't hear back from him for like about three weeks, <laughs> you know. What I mean, uh, I and, obviously, uh, you don't don't have to but he ain't, he ain't gonna be loose change though, is it? You, 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 put... nah, man, it was like, like just for his verse, it was like, and this is on a discounted price, like little under 40k, man. And we we sent that money between me and Zora. We sent that money and we thought, and we were just looking, twiddling our fingers. And and then like three weeks had gone by and we thought we lost the money. We thought the brothers done the dirty and like this Cheryl's not kind of, she's flaky. You get what I'm saying? But then what happens is um, his brother phones me and FaceTimes me and like they're in the studio recording. So you they they recorded a verse and you're gonna get that verse what he's putting in yeah there. they're in the yeah they're in the studio recording they FaceTime me and it was like three four in the morning bro and then how do you, like you then obviously get him into the video how how do you have to arrange that then that was like uh, that's gotta be a separate fee that's that was, gotta be a separate was, fee. yeah that was paying him another lot of money you get what I'm saying so uh, <laughs> you know it's mad it's mad. It's mad. But I wanted to do something, you know, I wanted to do something properly, you know, for I really believe that our Punjabi language should be pushed, just like how Spanish is listened to worldwide by people who don't even understand it. You get what I'm saying? Um, I do believe like our language should be like that as well, man. We got so much fun loving melodies and words and pronunciations and stuff. It's just amazing. Like but your travels in taking the the language everywhere, and then when you, I remember seeing it on Twitter because we used to interact on Twitter, just talk about Man United. You know, what yeah. I mean? so it was like I remember all of a sudden there's a picture of you and Shah Rukh Khan, and like this guy's flipped the script again. So yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. you know, to get, to get to get to kind of keep track of you was just like you couldn't. So like, yeah, how how were you kind of balancing yourself and getting yourself reset back to? 
I'm Spark Hill. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, you, somewhere down the line, things can carry you on and that. No, man, it was, all, it was all cool, man. Like, Sharuk was, Sharuk's an amazing guy, man. You get what I'm saying? Like, so down to earth. Um, and if you've worked, if you've done some work for his movie or something like that, he knows you personally. He's not gonna, he's not gonna see you standing in the corner and not come and say hello to you. He's that kind of guy. You get what I'm saying? If he knows you, he's not gonna blank you. You get what I'm saying? And uh, I mean, I'll give you a little story. It's like, uh, you know, when they did the music launch for uh, Happy New Year, the movie that we did the soundtrack for. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so you know, this is a crazy story. Like me and Kanika, we're just standing there on the side and then waiting for them to call us because they're launching the music and they didn't call us on stage or anything like that. And then everybody's got off and everything. And then you know, we're just mean. We're just standing on the side and Sharuk's seen us and he's come up to us and then he says, "Listen, we're going to do the press conference now. I'm going to call you on now. I don't know why these lads didn't call you or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right? So." Before he did his press conference, he made a special announcement for me and Konica to come on and shake everyone's hand personally. So it was actually more special rather than where I would have been alongside Vishal Shaker and a few other people and whatever. It was just me and Konica that had that special announcement done for us because uh, someone forgot to call us on stage when they when they launched the album. And, and like... You know your experience within the uh, within Bollywood at that point. I mean, I don't know how deep you're still in with it, but I remember that there was another headache that happened where people were jacking your tunes or not giving you the right yeah. credit and stuff. Yeah, that. yeah, that's to do with Raj. You get what I'm saying, and uh, and stuff. You know him not understanding the game of you know when you own have ownership of a recording. If you own the copyright of a recording, it doesn't mean that you could you own the the copyright to the publishing because I haven't signed no publishing deal to know don't be shy. I never signed no publishing deal with Envy. You get what I'm saying? So you only own the recording. But when it comes to you selling that song and my publishing to a Bollywood company, that involves me. Come see me. That involves me. That involves me getting paid. That involves me getting credited. That involves me getting royalties. Because it's my initial writing. You get what I'm saying? And then did, and did that blacklist you in uh, working there again or anything like that? No, no, no one's blacklisted me working there. I just left in there like I, I kind of got fed up. You get what I'm saying? Because for me, it was like, uh, you know, I, I, I spent my money on Snoop Dogg's song. I did my album and everything and whatever. And, you know, I, I still ain't seen a penny for that album. You get what I'm saying? So I thought, forget this, man. You know, I was making more money sitting in England, man. I don't need to be in Bombay with, like, 30 people working for me because they ain't doing shit for me, bro. You get what I'm saying? So it and was there's a lesson for anyone else thinking that Bollywood's a dream, he ain't. No, it is a dream, man. If it's a dream, it's a dream. But I just got fed up, man. I could have I could have hacked it out there. I, I'm still doing Bollywood stuff, bro. After leaving Bombay, like... I'm working quite closely with Akshay Kumar. You get what I'm saying? So I'm doing songs for his movies. You get what I'm saying? Um, I'm also like, everybody knows I'm close with Kapo Sharma as well. So like, it isn't like anything like that or, or anything. I just got fed up of living in Bombay. You get what I'm saying? It's just like, when it's summertime, it's like monsoon there. You get what I'm saying? And, you know, um... I didn't mind it too much in the winter because I was getting away from the bad weather over here. But I, just living out there for about a year and a half, two years, it's just kind of got to my nerves. And the people are so fake. Like everybody's business orientated. Everybody's everybody's after paper, 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 paper. Like money, 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 money. You get what I'm saying? I just wanted to get out of there, man. Get out of there and come back to reality of some kind. You get what I'm saying? And 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 have some peace at mind more than anything. Like you know that place like Bombay can really mess with the, some someone's mind, you know what I mean? Mess with their lifestyle, because people don't, literally don't sleep there, you know? You can get a call at three in the morning, can you come to the studio? We need this song, it's urgent, it's a request, we will pay. Uh, yo, it's one of them ones, man. You get what I'm saying? You literally can't sleep. You know, I, I was times where I was getting woken up and oh, we need, they need the mix, they need this, they need that. I was getting woken up at 4.30 in the morning to do, I finish songs off you get what I'm saying? Mm. And did you like, oh. um, like, 
obviously you know, you've you got family life that you have to kind of balance and stuff within there did, did you get was was that playing on your mind because you know i've got two young kids here yeah, i've got a plan everything no i was coming back whenever i please then i was coming back if, if like when i was living when i mean i was living out there I was, I was still coming back for like a weekend here a weekend there you get what i'm saying or flying my, my daughter out and my wife out you know when they're on holidays i've even bought a dog out there you get what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> oh shit man i can't like it, it feels i feel knackered even doing this podcast like talking to you like you, like yeah. how many how many kind of lives you've lived in different bits do you think nah, man it's, listen it's been fun bro i'm gonna be no, honest what, it's been what fun. Saying is, like, you know the uk people i always see like i'm really good i'm very close to that frenzy right and I know, and I've always seen it. We just travel, and I, I know he's. I think he's. Be, you know, you see that me where someone's been knackered since year four. He's like that. He's constantly tired, and, yeah. it, and it all it it catches up to to a point. But also, like you see how bigger the markets are at, around the world, yeah. and like you're one of the rare ones who's actually smashed it. Smashed it everywhere around, I and like people get going, too concentrated. Keep making music, bro. I mean, look, I'm I'm working with like. English artists as well, man. I just want to keep making music, keep doing different, different things. Really push myself to like different boundaries. You get what I'm saying? I don't feel tired at all, man. I know I look tired and stuff, but no, I you, I that's the really, point. You haven't aged. I feel energetic. I feel like I'm, I want to do more. You get what I'm saying? And uh, I mean, I do. I do feel. I, I mean, you may not think I look. Uh, you know, a lot of people do say that to me. You haven't aged and stuff, but I do. I do feel aged though when I go into a sh if I'm doing a uni gig now. Oh, forget it. Uh, it's oh, I like, feel like it's that. Like, it's like doing a gig for my nephews and nieces. It's horrible. You get what I'm saying? I, I think I'm gonna get everybody to call me Uncle Uncle Zeus, and you know, like a Snoop Switch stick. You get what <laughs> I'm saying? <laughs> Shit, that, and he's killed it with that label. Isn't it? Like he's like you're, you're yeah. a professor now, and you're just uh, the doctor's got it. Doctors. I need to get rid of the doctor and put uncle in front of me and uncle <laughs> uncle Zeus. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it bring it back around uh, on a couple of bits. You know when you look back on in terms of what your career now, and I, and I know you got the energy to carry on, so I'm not gonna go, go down that road of it. But when you look back, what's your favorite album? Now what? that you did your favorite vocal that you ever you, you put together mm. bro i'm gonna be honest with you man like nearly every one of my albums have been favorite barring the def jam 4.5 every album i've done for any artist which ain't many artists is like i the gill there's a nusrat fatih ali khan one um there's this jazzy b one um, and a couple of other Indian artists like Manpreet Sandhu and stuff like that. All albums I've been enjoyed because I've had the luxury to say, nah, I don't want to produce this song. Let's find something else. I've had the luxury to do songs that I've felt, you know? And and I've also been fortunate in that way as well. Uh, when I've had artists like Amrinda Gill bring certain songs like Ki Samjaye to the table and Yari, obviously, I, I bought to the table, you know, through Bilal Saeed and stuff, you know what I mean? But um, when when other artists bring brilliant lyrics and brilliant compositions, it just makes my life a lot more easier, you know what I'm saying? And I think I'm very fortunate like that, you know, because I've, I've had a lot of artists that have done that as well. And so, like... I'm 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 hearing what you're saying. Where do you, which album that did you think you grew the most? Uh, obviously, I would say the biggest one for me would be the Kangana album, the Under the Influence album. Um, and then I think what would have topped that would have been a year later. I did the Satya Sanaya album. You get what I'm saying? You know, um, so when you when you see that. And you, you know your journey and the way that you document it. I mean, like this year is gonna come up to those albums. I'll say I would say it goes far as saying those album. Well, Kangana album, I would say changed my life in that respect. I didn't have to work, and it's twenty years this year. Yeah, yeah, twenty years. I'm I'm dropping the new. I'm dropping the the twenty year refix in it this year. So <laughs> look out for that man. With the video is coming, bro. It's coming. Get those you know what book, I mean? bookings in now. In <laughs> fact, I might. I've got about four, two, three different mixes. I'm definitely going to drop two mixes. 
Uh, Fresh EP, ones, one with a video. EP. Nah, just like just to celebrate twenty years of Kangana, you know what I'm saying? Like revamped a little bit, man, with sounds a bit more punchy and a little bit more current sound wise. There's loads without of losing the original element. Without losing the original element. That's the one. That's the one. So you know when you look at the, the, the market now, do you feel like yeah, what's your forget I don't want to lead you into that. What's your feelings and what's your thoughts on the current market like in UK, India and Canada when you put it together? It's good, it's good. It's good, it's definitely opening doors. Sorry, man. I'm no, just... I know I, we'll tell everyone this is this is a little bit later than when we sort of sort it. So yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, you're only because it's, I'm shit and boring. Hopefully not, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but listen, no, I mean to be honest with you, um, I think I think this this nowadays is doing uh, this got you got some great producers out there, man, and like some of them are great, some of them are just picking up beats and, and just doing songs and God God bless them as well, man. You get what I'm saying? Because they just got love for music, you get what I'm saying? Um, do, you think, do you think UK market's gonna last long? Yeah. I'm still here, bro. What's up? Yeah, but you're into our class is international now. Nah, bro, man. I'm UK, <laughs> bro. I'm still here. I'm born bred UK, bro. Even <laughs> though my music appeals, you should be happy that a Birmingham sound is appealing worldwide. Did you did like when you're working with like with Born Ready, especially like yeah. for me, I I we all knew how long that album was in the works and it and sometimes like some some songs can sound dated or anything, but when it when it came out, it didn't. It still sounded fresh and it was different. Did yeah. did you have to do different versions of the album? Nah, 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 man. We to be honest with you, we we started it a little bit early, yeah, and then it kind of got delayed a little bit because Jazzy flying around and stuff, uh, and you know it was just a case of him doing the vocals, and then once once uh once we started to get together like uh, a bit more regular and speaking regular the album came together quite quickly in that sense as well like you know it took over maybe a space of eight months or something like that even though it'd been dragging on over a year or whatever but did, right? oh, here, here's one here's one so like you've obviously done one of the main albums with jazzy with that kind of like he's always done his album with like shinda as well like yeah. did you feel extra pressure to think like oh shit man this is like the first one yeah <laughs> no bro no. I enjoy man I enjoy that I enjoy that man challenge you get what I'm saying? I enjoy that man and you know like in the sense like it's a challenge for me man I still don't think my album kind of maybe touches any of the albums Shinda's done obviously those are epic albums you get what I'm saying God but I, I just wanted an opportunity you know with the to put something together a full showcase with Jazzy and I think we did we did that you know from from trying to trying to maintain his old sound from like thirty years back when he started, to what the public are listening to now, without his voice changing, you get me. Mm. I melody. So if you listen to that whole album back to back, it's a journey. You get what I'm saying. You'll hear from old school to new school vibes. But that that you see, I'm so glad you just mentioned that because I that pisses me off nowadays where. You people put albums and it's like 10 songs just stuck together. There's no theme through it. There's no, there's no, no... Because, because you know what they're doing? People are just picking up songs and they're just doing songs and they're thinking, oh, we're just going to make it modern. And, oh, you know what? Fucking Eddie P's done it like this. Let's copy that. Or like Curran's done it like this. Let's copy that. Or Sidhu's done it like this. Let's copy that. That's all. That's This is the trouble with our market. This is the trouble with our people, man. There are too many followers. Uh, look, I'm not knocking their work. I think those three names as artists, I think some of the bi like the biggest artists in this day and age to come on the uh, Punjabi scene. Mm -hmm. And not only to come on the Punjabi scene, they're making Punjabi music proud. They're making the Punjabi language proud. Something that we have struggled to do for years to get our language across to non-Punjabis. They're doing that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, one you of know, your first interviews, you actually, you said one of your missions was to get your sound global and the language global. Yeah. And yeah. you stuck to it. Yeah. I mean, that's, I still, I still stick to that, man. I still want to keep doing that. That's what I want to keep doing as much as everybody else is doing it. But like, 
even though AP is doing it in his way, Curran's doing it in his way, and Sidhu did it in his way, you know, I, I feel as though like I shouldn't, I should create another avenue so the avenues get so much. There's so many avenues and they got their own indi individual thing. And that's what makes that whole language barrier crossover because there's so much versatility. It's not just the one consistent sound or the one. You get what I'm saying? So do you think like artists in terms of more, more than just obviously the music, like you, there's clearly a set of moral ethics and, and, um, a philosophy that you follow so you know you, you talk about a, a lot of things and you know you, you obviously coming across so educated in in these ways how is it important that when nowadays yeah. when you got social media for example you're not just listening to the music you get you get you get insight in terms of what that kind of person is do you think yeah. this it's a good thing or a bad thing man i think social media is like Social media is great in it, but don't make it your real life, man. And there's some people out there that it's their real life. You get what I'm saying? You're on social media and whatever, like, you know, kind of flaunting different things and whatever, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it isn't real. Do you reckon is you would have got cancelled if it was back then like it was? Mate, I don't think I would have been one of them if... If I I don't know, man. To be look, if Kangana came out in this day and age, and it did, did, and it was the song that it is today, and it came out in this day and age, it, obviously social media wise, uh, numbers and figures would be different for me. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that still wouldn't change the fact that I, I would want to show my private life or whatever. I think I'm showing enough of my mm. whatever I want to show. You get what I'm saying through my music. And in my videos or whatever, you know, I I don't want to, I don't think I feel I need to show any more of my life, like through social media and stuff. And people like that young kids that I see a lot of young kids are like, uh, you know, um, going the wrong way, you know, in the sense of going, getting depressed, going through depression and stuff like that, because they're looking at certain other things. And, you know, it's like being envious, almost, it's almost like a, a tool for people to see things and want things. and. If you haven't got it, go out and get it. You get what I'm saying? Maybe in the positive way, but there's also the negative side of things as well. How people not want to work to get the same thing that someone else is possibly flaunting. You get what I mean? Yeah, I got you, man. I got you, bro. Um, I'm I'm going to kind of bring it to a close at this bit now. I want to ask yeah, you man. a couple of last bits. So this is called uh, the bandwagon. So it's either, is there a bandwagon that you want to jump on jump off or is there anything that you want to get off your chest this is your space to do so uh not really to be honest with you i'm i'm pretty cool man i'm like i'm a happy soul man you know what i mean i'm having fun making good music uh, meeting new people um and i will say that the best is still yet to come from me bro you get what i'm saying i know i've been saying that for the last 20 years but it's still yet to come so the next six to twelve months, we we're expecting jazzy. We're expecting Kangana refixes. Yeah, right? yeah. Al yep. the album. May I? I got other singers on my album, like Brenda Gill's done a song on my album. Uh, Amrit Man has. Uh, I can't Benny. Uh, I got a few. I got a few songs that are gonna come out this year, bro. I'm not gonna stop him, bro. You get what I'm saying? And then we got we got the 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 masterpiece with all the old vocals. Is that gonna come? You know, like an exclusive listening session? Nah. Well, I can't <laughs> say. I, I am doing. I am. I have started a song with Master Rakesh because I feel as though I got some history with that guy. Yeah. And, and uh, I feel as though I want to do something like you know, um, to try to make his game rise. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah, he's yeah. a talented guy. And he kind of disappeared um, after he got deported and whatever, you know what I'm saying? Zeus, I just want to thank you, man. Honestly, I, I, very few times I get a little bit nervous in it. But this one was, this one, I'll be thinking nah, you know, this about nervous, three bro. days. <laughs> listen, mate, I'm probably more nervous than you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. No, I'll just be nervous, man. I was, um, no, I really appreciate it. Take your time. Um... But it's all, nervous is a good thing because it keeps you on your toes. And Mate, then, being nervous proves to me that you're human, man. You're not like, you know what I mean? 
yeah. a zombie or like you know an egotistic kind of person or whatever. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold these dates in my head now. I've got like a bunch of stuff there where I, I tap people back up and say, listen, your account's due, yeah. man. We need to we need to hear a follow up where you're at. So like mate, I, 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 got, do it. Mate, I got trust me, I got bangers after bangers coming. I know I have, bro. You get what I'm saying? Thank you. Doctor, yeah. I really appreciate it, Zeus, man. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Brian, on your podcast. And keep doing what you're doing, man. I think you're doing a, a great little thing here, man. It's like, I've watched a few of yours, you know, Sick. previously. And uh, <laughs> they're pretty good, man. They're pretty good, man. You get, you know, you get deep into people. I think I think you got to, you got to, this is also a skill, you know, where you can get people to kind of open up and kind of be themselves with you. You know what mm. I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, I try, I try and model doing, myself on Louis Farou. I love him. He's like, yeah. you talk, man. You're the you're the star, he ain't me. So it's just yeah. like that's I. I've always wanted to come. I try and come across as a fan because these are the questions I want to know. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm not owned by no agency that I just put it out. Yeah. If you like it, we can. Just, if you don't like it, yeah, probably. yeah. They're real questions, bro. They're real questions, man. You get what I'm there saying? Back, back to Mary Hill. One, didn't it? No one's asked you that question before. You know, nah, man. I'm, so, I'm surprised, bro. But yeah, man, you brought back some memories there, bro. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Cheers, bro. All the best. Yeah, man. God bless you, bro. Take care. Bye.